Long time no talk. Learning objective number four, last one of our chapter one, week one video series. Describe the purpose and content for each of the financial statements. We have really four parts to our financial statements, um, and really five if you want to be really literal about it. Uh, one is the statement of income, otherwise known as the income statement. One is the statement of changes in equity. One is the statement of financial position, otherwise known as the balance sheet. You also have the statement of cash flows. And the fifth part that not a lot of people talk about are the notes to the financial statements. So what is the statement of income or the income statement? This is where we talk about what happened during the year. We're like, cool, what revenues did you make? You know, this is items like uh, if you sold baseballs, that would be revenue sales of baseballs. And then expenses related to the sale of baseballs uh, and your operations for that year or for that period if you are choosing to report on a different period. Uh, the sets of when to report are either dictated by the law or uh, and or a personal uh, organizational preference. You could really do this uh, every single day if you wanted to, but then you'd realize that you were spending more time doing your accounting than actually selling baseballs. So you know, on your income statement or statement of income, you will see revenues and expenses for that period of time. You will then take your revenues less expenses and that'll equal your net income. Your net income then articulates to the statement of changes of equity because what you retain in your business, that is your net income, that is retained in the business, gets added to your equity. And we report under this statement of changes in equity, um, the different components of the share ownership uh, during time. So things like net income that comes through here, as well as if you sold uh, any more shares and equity raise, or if you retired any shares. From there, the statement of changes in equity really do describe one part of the balance sheet. So that gets articulated down here to the balance sheet or the statement of financial position. And in this, it shows the assets and the liabilities and the shareholders equity um, as at a specific point of time. So in summary, the revenues and expenses for a year get totaled. And if you have a positive net income, that is revenues are in excess of expenses, then you have a positive net income that goes to equity. That's what is retained in the business, um, in your retained earnings, as well as the shareholders, uh, the common shares. Then that um, equity, the shareholders equity, is part of our balance sheet. Um, so too are our assets and liabilities. We're gonna do a comprehensive example at the end of this video. So you may want to bookmark this or take a picture of this slide and come back to it later. We also have our statement of cash flows. We will be revisiting the statement of cash flows in more depth at the end of this course. Not the video, but this course. Uh, this tends to be a little bit more complicated uh, than the first three statements because we are, we're effectively not taking anything new but we're showing it in a different way. Uh, for those of you intending to be finance uh, or even um, mostly finance majors would really care about the statement of cash flows because it shows how a company, you know, if you think about cash as the lifeblood of an organization, it tells you how good is this organization doing? Do they have a lot of runway? Do they have a lot of, you know, <laughs> ability, like life? Uh, or do they have a little bit or how are they using that life? You know, are they spending all of their money on, you know, buying big buildings, but not enough to do anything else? Really lets you know, where is the cash going? Okay, and the order of operations for how we prepare these statements are we start with the statement of income, have our revenues, less our expenses. Then we see what articulated through to our equity, the changes in equity throughout the year, and that will flow into our statement of financial positions. And once all these are done, then you can do your statement of cash flows and prepare your notes. Okay, so I gave you a brief overview, but here we are gonna go into more depth. Our revenues 
are going to be our sale of products. Um, as soon as the sale is made, that is the risk and rewards are transferred from the organization to the purchaser, we are able to recognize that revenue. This would result in an inflow of assets. So our revenues are gonna go up and so are our assets. Conversely, our expenses are going to be the cost that we incurred to generate those revenues. If we think about the baseballs, um, we are selling, um, producing and selling baseballs, then costs could be the costs of the materials to create those baseballs. Uh, they could also be the costs uh, to pay um, the CFO, the CFO, uh, the plant manager, so any costs associated to generate those revenues. At the end of the period, revenues minus expenses uh, equal net income, and if this formula creates a negative number, that is our expenses exceed our revenues, that would be a net loss. Let's take a look at an example of a statement of income or an income statement, or as Tesla calls it, the statement of operations. Okay, so here we see that uh, Tesla has chosen to show uh, four or five, five different periods. Uh, so Q2 of 2022, uh, all the way up to the most recent, which is Q2 of 2023. And so we look um, across, we then see that their revenues are separated into the automotive sales, some regulatory credits, some leasing, energy and generation and storage, and service and other revenues. So if I were to ask you, which was the largest revenue generating offer, uh, uh, line for the most recent quarter for Tesla, you would come here and you would say that was automotive leasing was the total uh, greatest source of revenue for 2023. 20, uh, and that was uh, comprised of uh, the largest individual segment, which was the sale of automotive sales. So part of me, I think I misspoke there. So this is, uh, yeah, this is the total automotive revenues, which is um, adding up our leasing, our regulatory credits, and our sales. Huh. So our number, our, so all of these three together equals 21, um, 268, and then adding in our energy generation and services equals uh, 25, just under 25. So the largest single line, pardon me, is automotive sales. So if you were thinking, okay, well, what happens if um, their generation storage line goes away? Well, they'd still likely still be in business, but what happens when their automotive sales are impacted? Well, this is probably gonna have the largest um, impact, not with holding anything else on the business, just because it is effectively 80% of the revenues. Okay, so similarly, we look at all the different types of expenses. And we have um, our direct cost of goods uh, sold right here. So anything related directly to automotive sales, here are the cost of sales relating to that, and so on and so forth. So then we look at revenues minus uh, the cost of revenues, or the cost of goods sold, and we're left with our gross profit. Then we have all the other expenses that Tesla incurred throughout the year, research and development expenses, selling general administrative, so like head office costs, any restructuring, this is where they would put in uh, the layoffs and severance, and then we're left with total uh, income from operations. Okay, from there, we have our interest income and our interest expenses. So if they had any term deposits, this would come here. And similarly, if they paid any interest on loans, it would come here. We get net income before taxes, taxes, and then our net income. Sometimes they have some other events that come in here um, that need to be uh, differentiated between. Um, so for uh, example, non-controlling interest, I'm not, I'm gonna pause this here, <laughs> um, and I'm gonna say, you will learn about that in 4102. That is my advanced accounting class. So otherwise, you can just come here and see that this is our net income attributable to common shareholders. And that's why investors care about the income statement. How am How is my company or the company that I own a portion of the stocks in, how are they doing? 
So we would say, hey, what's the net income? And uh, we would come here and we would say, really, I promise you, on your financial statements, it would be relatively simple. So we would just see the 2614. Uh, but typically, it would be the last number in the lines. That said, you try to find a publicly <laughs> traded company with really straightforward financials, and I mean, you might get a prize. Uh, lots of inter interesting things. Okay. So I also want to show you these real public company financial statements so that when we do them on our own, you realize, huh, what we're doing is much simpler and we're going to be streamlining this. However, um, when I go to a co-op uh, job or I'm reading financial statements uh, in another class, like you do have the tools and ability that you're learning in this class to actually work with real public company documents. It's just more complex right? But you are going to be learning like 80% of it. So you really do have a lot more knowledge than you're going to give yourself credit for. And I just want to make sure that I show you that through line each and every time. All right, back to the slides. Uh, our next is our statement of changes in equity. And our equity includes uh, the various components, which is our share capital and our retained earnings. We're also going to have some other accounts that are more applicable once you get into more complex accounting. But in general, you'll have share capital. So that's the amount that are invested by shareholders. Uh, it could be common shares, it might be preferred shares. And then you'll have your retained earnings. And as the name suggests, this is um, accumulation of earnings, so revenues, less expenses, that are retained in the company. And so whatever you make, less the amount that you dividend out to shareholders is going to be in this retained earnings uh, bucket. Okay, our third state, oh, pardon me. Um, so if we have a visual of this, which I do like this, again, we're going to have two main sections. One is the changes in common shares, and the other is the changes in retained earnings. Because we're looking at changes, we always start with what is the balance at the beginning of the year. So what is our starting common shares? What are our starting retained earnings? Then we see, okay, did we issue any more shares? Did we sell any shares during the period? And did we repurchase any shares throughout the period? Sometimes we'll have done neither of these. So our ending common shares equals our beginning. Or sometimes we have one or the other or both. All right, now down to changes in retained earnings. We start with our beginning, we have, and then we add in our net income, or we minus our net loss. And that comes from our statement of income, our revenues minus our expenses. From there, we de declare dividends. So dividends are like investor treats. Um, dividends are declared to the share owners. Um, should we say share owners in Canada? could also say stock owners if we were in the United States, but dividends are declared to the share owners um, as at a specific period. And that is, you know, effectively, um, you know, you might have bought a share for $100 last year, and then um, a dividend is declared at $2 per share. Cool. Uh, you would get $2 times the number of shares that you have as at um, that, at the date, um, the date of record. Okay, uh, which is pretty close to the dividend de declaration date. All right, so you have retained earnings plus net income or minus net loss minus dividends declared equals your retained earnings at the end of the period. So in total, you have your common shares at the end of the period plus your retained earnings at the end of the period and that equals um, your equity. Then you have your statement of financial position, which is where you have your shareholders equity, which is what we just saw in the last slide. I'm going to go back. You have your common shares at the end of the period and your retained earnings. That comes right up here under shareholders equity. And um, that equals your assets plus your liabilities. Assets are resources owned or controlled by business and liabilities are amounts that are owed by the business to lenders or other creditors. The golden equation in accounting, assets equal 
liabilities plus shareholders equity. Pardon me if I said that backwards two seconds ago. This is the golden, golden um, equation. A equals L plus SE. Assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. Okay, so I feel like it is time to do a big, long example. And we're gonna do it in a couple different parts. So we're gonna look at One Planet Cosmetics Corp. And it was formed on June 1st, 2021. And yet 30 days later, we have been asked to create their financial statements. We are given all of these amounts. So in future weeks, in future classes, in fact, I think it's just next week, we're gonna figure out how to capture economic events and turn them into debits and credits and how these um, balances would come into creation. However, we're kind of given that second step. We're given the balances, you know, basically the company started on June 1st, all of these were zero, and then we look up and 30 days later, our accountants are like, cool, here's all the ending balances. Now it's time for you to make a statement of income, a statement of changes in equity, and a statement of financial position for that month. So we're gonna take these balances and we're gonna put them into their various categories and we're gonna create some financial statements. We are gonna create financial statements, I kid you not, just like this for Tesla, just like their balance sheet, just like their statement of operations, just like, um, no, we're not gonna to touch cash flows. Um, and we're gonna do this in, you know, by the end of this video. So what I'm gonna ask you to do now is I'm gonna ask you to pause the video in just a second and but first, I would like you to see what you can do based on your prior readings, based on the adaptive practice, if you got a second, or based on your intuition, and see if you can divide these um, account types into either assets, liabilities, share capital, revenues, expenses, and dividends. So if you can see, if you can separate these into those major categories, and then return to the video and we'll do just the first part before we actually create some financial statements. Sound good? Talk to you soon. All right, so this first part is where we're going to put each of these into these categories. All right, so we have cash and that is gonna be an asset. And so we have cash and that is for Fifteen thousand. Okay. You know what? Right now, I'm just going to put in the title. So let's just do. No, I'm going to put in the full numbers, and I'm just going to have to slide back and forth. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this, kind of come back, and have this um, on my um, sheet, so I don't have to flip back and forth because I'm kind of I'm restricted by this. I don't want to go over this. Okay, two seconds. All right, so I have my numbers right here and we'll move this around as we need to. Okay, so I put cash in the assets. Cash is a result of a past transaction um, that the uh, owners control and will have a future economic benefit because you can use cash to buy things. All right, I have accounts receivable. So accounts receivable often gets abbreviated as AR. Uh, so I'm going to do just that. I got some AR. All right, and now we have, and I might just start doing some things to keep this a little bit more organized, although I will tell you that there are no marks for pretty. So, you know, get in, make your point, move on. Um, okay, so we got our liabilities, accounts payable. So this is for items that you've received that you have not paid for. If you buy something on credit, um, this is, you know, what you're doing. You're buying on accounts payable which is sometimes referred to as AP. So we will do that here and just make a little bit of separation. Again, no marks for pretty, but I'm also showing this for the first time. So some, some balance for pretty is probably um, best here. Okay. Okay, so AP, things like something we bought on credit. 7,300, cool, cool. Um, and now we have bank loan payable. Well, um, just like an accounts payable, it's something that we owned, uh, except that it'll be specifically for money. 
um, or perhaps money that we borrow from the bank to purchase an asset directly. So either way, bank loan payable. I'm just gonna bank loan pay. Okay, and this is going to be for, oh my gosh, yes, our, woo, $23,000, all right. Not cheap day. Move along, we have our common shares at $36,000. Common shares is part of our share capital. So part of our share capital, we have our, um, or yes, our shareholders equity. So um, we have our common shares. Okay, so we're gonna go com common shares and we are going to do this for how much do we have here? $36,000, cool, cool, all right. Need to make a little bit more separation, moving along. Um, all right, dividends declared, 1,000, cool. I'm gonna put those right here under dividends. Dividends declared, because the moment they are declared, we book them, one, two, three. All right, cool, cool, where are we now? Service revenues, service revenues is going to be right here, so service, revenues and we are going to do that for an amount of 24,200 cool and we're going to have um supplies expense of 2100 all right so because it said expense we're going to put it here supplies expense and we are going to put it here and we're going to do a little buffer don't worry, for those of you who are like, you need a buffer on the other side. Yes, I agree. A little buffer here, boom, boom. Okay, and so we have our supplies expense, and that is 2100. All right, um, if at whatever point I'm making a typo, don't worry, I will eventually realize when we go to balance these things, because that's the cool thing with this kind of math, is it has to balance. Uh, that said, um, you're welcome to scream at the screen. I just won't hear you, unfortunately, but I will fix it. Okay, um, let's see. We're down here. We're at supplies expense for 2100. Cool, now we're at supplies for 1200. Huh. Supplies are an asset. So supplies are things that we bought in the past that have a future economic benefit um, that the company controls. So they have a future economic benefit because there's supplies like cleaning supplies um, or, I don't know, what else could supplies be? Um, some sort of inventory that's just sitting on our shelves. So that supplies, that 1200, it's actually gonna go right here. All right, equipment. Equipment are big things, <laughs> typically. Um, so they could be things like tractors, they could be things like uh, vehicles that a company is using and its operations. Um, so this is, you know, big equipment with a life beyond a year, typically. All right, $52,000. Okay, they've had a busy six months here. Interest expense. So it's an expense and it goes here. So we got interest expense. All right. Make that a little bigger. Okay, and how much do we have? We have 800. Cool, cool. Uh, office expense. Office expense. It's an expense. It goes under expenses. And it's going to be a 1,500. Utilities expense. <laughs> you got it. Util, oh gosh. Util, it tees, expense. Mm, 1,500. All right. Okay, I know no marks for pretty, however, just sometimes. Income tax, oh my gosh, expense. I can't make this stuff up. Uh, expense, it comes here. Um, people, I used to do it where I would just like show the solution and walk through and people like, I wanna hear you talk about it and do it. Well, <laughs> all right, uh, salaries, expense. Uh, here we go, 5,700. Cool. All right. So now we've classified each one of our elements and we need to make our financial statements. So I'm going to just hide this off to the side. I'm going to put it over here just in case I messed up and I need to like recount my numbers. We'll have that over there. Um, but we're here. So we are here. 
So now what I need you to do is I need you to create me some financial statements. And I'm pretty sure that um, income statement or statement of income, um, that these are, we're gonna start with income statement, and then we are going to go to our balance sheet, no, our statement of changes in equity, and then we're gonna to go to our balance sheet. Um, in real life, we would then do our statement of cash flow, but we're not gonna do our statement of cash flow. We're gonna be aware that it exists, but we're gonna revisit it at the end of this term. All right, so now I'm gonna ask you to pause the video in just a moment and use these accounts and do your best to make these three financial statements, starting with your income statement. And when you're ready to come back, unpause the video and we'll go over it together. Thank you so much. All right, welcome back. Let us make some financial statements. All right, our income statement, we are going to take our um, service revenue and we are going to take our expenses. And however you wanna present this, I'm not super fussed, um, but some people, I'll show you some options. So sometimes people will actually make a separate column. So we'll expand here. And what they'll do is they'll put the, all their revenues. Um, oh, I can really spell it. Hey, rev in used. Oh, that's okay. Mm, probably not. I don't know. Okay. And then they'll do all their expenses. And they'll kind of sum that up and then go over here. Again, I'm not super fast. You'll see in Tesla, they have one way of doing it. Everybody else has another way of doing it. And everybody else has a different way of doing that. And there, it's all good. But I do this line to kind of show, cool, Here's all my service revenues, which ends up just being one type. Here's all of my expenses, which equals another um, amount for total expenses. And then I have my net income, which is going to be my revenues minus my expenses. All right, so once I see my total revenues minus expenses, I have my net income, which is also known as uh, net profit or net loss. So we use those words in interchangeably. Cool, uh, congratulations, you just made an income statement. All right, let us just move some stuff over here a little bit. Okay, and now we're gonna go for the statement of changes in equity. So remember, the statement of changes in equity has two main accounts. This is our common shares and our retained earnings. So we'll just go like this, common shares, and we'll go retained earnings. Okay, cool. So at the, we're gonna say, what are they at the beginning? Um, at the beginning, they were uh, nothing. So how are we gonna make this? Let's make this over here a little bit. So at the beginning, they were nothing. And then what common shares did we have? Oh, throughout um, the item we had an addition of 36,000 in common shares. And so let's move this over a little bit. Beginning plus what happened during the year, 36, and we are going to have a total of 36,000. All right, um, now our retained earnings. We started off at the um, beginning retained earnings, and that was zero because it was literally at the beginning, the beginning balance is zero. And then we have our net income. Cool, um, we had net income, so it was positive, and we're gonna put that here, awesome. So then we take our beginning retained earnings plus our net income, and this is where we also take in our dividends. So dividends are over here. Are we going to plus or subtract, plus or minus, our dividends from our retained earnings? If you said minus, you are correct. So dividends go um, outside to our external shareholders. Uh, we say thank you so much for investing us. Um, you invested, let's see, 36,000. We're like, here's your treats. Here's your life. Here's your piece of our $12,000, almost $12,000 we earned this year. We would like to reward you with $1,000. Thank you so much for your investment. Okay, and then we have here, our ending retained earnings is going to be a sum of beginning, our net income and our dividends, 
10,900. So that means that um, we end up our um, shareholders equity. So you'll hear about it. It's either shareholders equity or just equity. And so that's these two numbers put together. And this is going to be our common shares um, plus our retained earnings. So for 46,900. All right. So we have made an income statement. And we've seen that our net income comes into play and articulates through to our statement of changes of uh, equity. And now we are going to make a balance sheet. Cool, cool, cool. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a little peek. All right. And I'm going to move this balance sheet below. So we've used dividends. We've used expenses. We've used revenues. We've effectively used our share, our common shares. And so I'm going to put this. organization. Okay, yeah, we'll just put it right here. We'll put it right here, balance sheet. Cool. Um, no, we'll put it back. Honestly, it really doesn't matter. I don't know why I'm making it matter so much. All right, balance sheet. It's because I care. And then we'll just move this over a little bit. All righty. So, our balance sheet, our accounting equation, equals assets equal liabilities plus equity. Uh, this might also be called owner's equity, either way. A equals L plus E. Cool, all right. Our assets, we are going to take our assets and we are gonna plunk them down in here. Thank you so much for our assets. And so we have our total assets. Um, where are we, formulas, auto sum, Thank you so much for our total assets of 77,200. Cool, all right, let's go on to liabilities, our L, and here's where we have our AP and our bank loan. And let's see, let's do the same thing. How much is our total um, liabilities? And our total liabilities are gonna be 30,200. All right, time to have our shareholders equity or our equity. So we will have our equity and we will put in our common shares, which are going to be, okay, we'll move this over just a little bit, yeah. Okay, I don't know if I want to make this, let's make this a little underlined or let's, let's italicize. Let's italicize our little, here, here, here. Fun. Okay, our common shares. Our common shares are going to be thirty six thousand, and our shareholders. Um, pardon me. Um, our retained earnings. Our ending retained earnings. Retained earnings are going to be equal to our ten thousand nine hundred. And as we saw here, our total common shares plus dividends. Uh, pardon me. So common shares plus retained earnings equals 46,900. So let us see if our math carries through. Fabulous, 46,900. All right, and then we would go, let's see, total um, liabilities plus equity. And that we would do in another line here to indicate that there was something summed up. And that would be our liabilities plus our equity. And we have 77,000, whoops, sorry, I got so excited. 77,200, 77,200 assets equal liabilities plus equity. So now we are going to put a nice double underline under each of these to indicate we are awesome balancers. Um, and we are going to put that underneath this one as well because we are awesome balancers. Um, doesn't need to be a Cool. All right. Um, so you know you balance when uh, when this happens, and I always tend to put like a little smiley face because people, when you are the CFO of a public oil and gas company and you are like, you know, working kind of late and the numbers are starting to meld together, your financial statements look more like Tesla than um, 1101, you are like, oh gosh, am I going to balance? So whether you are in 1101, 
um, and, or you are beyond in your career, whether you're reviewing financial statements or using them or creating them, this is the happiest moment and we use one of the happier colors in our uh, field right here to indicate like we are flipping the world. All right, so congrats. You have just made your first set of financial statements. Truly, I'm flipping excited for you. Let's end off this video. As I mentioned previously, once you have created your income statement, your statement of changes of equity, and your balance sheet, you are now ready to make your statement of cash flows. Um, you will see, uh, again, chapter, like one of the last chapters, we're gonna be looking at how that cash is generated, how that cash is used, and this is something that our finance people will be extra interested in. And this will all tie to the change of cash for the period. What was our beginning cash? What was our ending cash? And how was it used? So we can kind of see some examples of this. Just, again, from a very high level, you will get more interaction at the end of this term. We're looking at the cash from operations. Okay, we generated, because it's positive, $1,900. And that came because our um, receipts, our cash coming in, was greater than our cash going out. We then have investing activities, which was minus 5,000, which means we spent 5,000 on um, investment type of activities, which includes our equipment here. Cool. Uh, and we had, we generated cash from financing, largely from issuing common shares, as well as from a bank loan, uh, less dividends uh, paid out. So we had overall a net increase of cash throughout the year. So that indicates an increased, um, at least short-term healthiness. And then we can kind of look through and say, okay, cool, is this sustainable? Well, then we tend to look at patterns, how is cash used and generated um, throughout the years, and how does this fit into the economic story and situation of a company? I would say that if this was a relatively new organization, this is absolutely fine. You need to generate some financing uh, in order to you know, fund your business and fund your um, and fund it. Um, many businesses choose to do that. And that is perfectly normal. Um, however, you know, month after month after month, or year after year after year, if this is the case, eventually, if you're only generating $1,900, but raising 15,000 investors, the banks, people won't be too, too happy to keep loaning you or investing in you. So got to really take a look. What does this mean? Uh, and what could this indicate in the future? These statements are interrelated. You saw that the statement of changes of equity used the results of the income statement. You saw that in the balance sheet, the, um, uh, the equity part used the changes in statement of changes of equity. So it really goes round and round and round where the balance sheet is accumulation of all of the activities, all of the revenues and expenses that have happened throughout all of the years that the company has been in business. Uh, it's pretty cool. I love, love, love looking at financial statements. Um, it's really a neat way to kind of get a synopsis of what is going on in the business. We do have a course taught by my colleague, uh, Tammy Kroll, uh, both in the undergraduate as well as in the graduate level called Financial Statement Analysis. And this is a course that is open to uh, all majors um, in most programs. And it, she really talks about what do the statements mean in relation to different companies. She'll look at companies like Tesla, as well as companies like Sobeys and at Peloton. Really relating things that are happening in the news with um, the financial statements of these public companies. Each year, uh, each year public companies are required to produce an annual report. This includes financial statements, uh, management discussion and analysis, which um, are statements that actually include forward-looking statements made by the management, um, as well as the auditor's report and notes to the financial statements, were, which are actually a part of the financial statement, as well as um, other notes that can be made in the annual report. Uh, depending on where the company is listed, there might be other requirements, such as on uh, the TSX, you are also required to have quarterly financial statements, though they do not need to be in the depth of the annual financial statements. 
As I mentioned um, earlier on in uh, this week, mini lecture videos, uh, we have a summary of the various statements. Um, <coughs> pardon me. Uh, we have our I for us, which is for public company um, required. And then we have ASPE, which tends to be our private companies, although private companies may choose to adopt I for us. In our statement of changes of equity, that is required under IFRS. However, under ASPE, a company may choose to make that somewhat slightly uh, easier and just show a statement of retained earnings. So where the changes in equity would be the common shares and retained earnings, only a statement of the retained earnings is required under ASPE. And this would likely be applicable because a lot of private companies are owned by one owner. And so for them to ha be required to you know, make a statement of changes in equity where they're just discussing their own changes in uh, common shares, well, they're a private company. They might not have too many external users. And it really, if they were required to show anything more, it could just be more work than it's worth. So that's, that's kind of why the difference between the two. All right, one more question for you. I want you to take a moment and think about what you've just learned or what you've just started to learn, right? Because learning is a process. It is repeated exposure to same or similar topics. So my question to you is, what was the most difficult concept that you've encountered this week so far? Now, I ask you, if your friend, somebody sitting beside you, a new friend, old friend, was struggling with that concept, that very concept that you just stated, how would you suggest they study and learn it? Feel free to post the answer to this question to the discussion board. Um, I would really welcome uh, your participation there. And actually, I'm gonna do, introduce a bonus for this week. Um, there might be other bonuses in the future. I don't know, I like to mix things up. But I would say that the first three people that post what their favorite color is uh, to the discussion board uh, is gonna earn a $20 gift certificate, uh, e-gift certificate of their choice uh, to something like Chapters or Amazon or Walmart or something that I can easily get and send you in the email. So if you post um, to the discussion board, let's see where we're gonna ask for you to put it, under general admin or I don't know, chapter one, either one, I'd be happy to, you can post your uh, favorite color, you can leave your name, you can leave it anonymous, I can find out who you are, um, but I'd be happy to reflect um, and just thank you for your participation, thank you for waiting until the end um, and watching this all the way through, and I'm really looking forward to having an awesome semester with you. Uh, take care and have a good week.